Antonio Conte coming into Spurs. They've got to be happy with it. And, and listen, we'll take your calls after five. We'll take your calls now. Uh, but let's also talk about how much work he's got to do. Danny Murphy there talking about coaching them and, and evolving the players. Uh, does he mean that he, he's got to ship a load of players out, bring in a whole new squad? The midfield isn't good enough. You look at the defence. I mean, Saturday night, the defence was appalling. Mm. The main man up front isn't playing well, doesn't want to be there anyway. So it's a massive job. Conte's With nobody to replace him, unless yeah. you play a son through the middle. Amazing. Yeah, that, it's <laughs> it's it, difficult times for uh, to be a Tottenham fan, there's no doubt about it. But the Tottenham fans booed Harry Kane on Saturday evening. Mm. Now, that that's a that to me is a big story, because they if he was out at the beginning of the season. When he came back into the team, they didn't boo him. They kind of welcomed him back. But has he come back into a team that are not playing to a style that he can excel at? And what I mean by that is but Nuno is stuck in his ways. He's quite a stubborn manager, isn't he? And he yeah. did so well at, at Wolves. He did he brought wonderful times to Wolves. But by the end, people were getting frustrated by his stubbornness and he didn't want to change. And I think he's gone to Tottenham and he has been stubborn. And people said he'd come in, he understands the Spurs philosophy and what we expect from our teams. He just ignored it mm. and did what he does. That's all he did. He just did what Nuno does to teams and he was going to be stubborn with it. And in the end, it's cost him his job because Tottenham, the way they have played, there is no creativity. There is Kane not getting a touch in games hardly. Mm. No shots on target. I mean, and they're not scoring goals. So there's there's your problem right there. Am, am I blaming Kane for that? I think he's obviously got the players going to take a little bit of blame, especially some of the body language at times. But I think it has a, a lot down to the style of play. Without a doubt. It's the first time since 2013 they've not had a shot on target in a game at home. It's uh, And that's unacceptable. Um, Nick's a Spurs fan. What do you want to say, Nick? Yeah, hello, hello, lads. Yeah, um, good to be on again. Uh, well, here we go again. <laughs> Welcome to the Daniel Levy not-so-magical man- managerial merry-go-round. I mean, poor old Nuno. Everybody could see the job was always going to be too big, you know. And Harry Kane, quite honestly, he was a disgrace on Saturday. Clearly, his mate Harry Winks isn't in the team. He's not giving it all. Um, heard Danny Murphy this morning saying, oh, it could be because he's physically tired. One goal in eight games. Sometimes he was in the left-back position. You know, the, at the end of the day, if you're a big club, th- these days, if you're, if you're at a big club, you can only have two types of managers. A, a big name, who all the players will respect, or somebody who's come through the levels... <laughs> Um, like, if you like, or I wouldn't have picked him, like Ryan Mason, who they all, you know, who they would respect. Well, the if mates, somewhere mates in the middle, with him, you You've mean. got no chance. Mates with him. More yeah, than respect, got, yeah. yeah. Mates. Or you've got to have a big name who they'll think, oh, hold on, he's not going to stand for any nonsense. Anybody in the middle managing a big club, unless they hit the ground running, they're going to be on a hiding to nothing. Yeah, I, I mean, Conte is a big name. I mean, it's, there's, there's no better out-of-work manager right now than Antonio Conte, who has done things in the Premier League. He's done things in Italy as well. This, I, I don't think they could do better, No, Tottenham. Now, in terms of how they play, that's a different matter. So, But having said that, um, you said to me earlier, Lukaku scored goals under yeah. Conte, so that they will score yeah, goals. Yeah, well, their forwards do score goals. Yeah. I mean, but, but it's good. what he's going to do is make that defence stronger, make that defensive midfield wall better, because at the moment, you just said it all, defensively rubbish. Mm. The defensive wall, rubbish, as in the two, when we link... You look at Manchester United, how they changed in the, in that game, how, how solid they looked compared to the, the game before. Yes, yeah. they were playing against Tottenham, who don't create anything, so it's not an hard <laughs> game to play against. But... That's what Tottenham need to do because mm. I've said this for a few years now. Defensively, Tottenham are rubbish. Rubbish. <laughs> and that's not exactly... I mean, look at it. I mean, even the bench. I mean, you look at that bench and, and the bench don't fill you with excitement, does it? You look at a bench and you think, mm, yeah, I can tell that's why a team top six. That bench is rubbish. <laughs> Spurs are. That's a team who they expect their players to get into the top four, into Champions League place with that bench. We're looking to finish 10th. <laughs> He's not happy, is he? Uh, Ian's a Spurs fan. Hi, mate. You're on Talk Sport. Hi, mate. Yeah, I was at the game on Saturday and it was pretty toxic, but I think 
I think Nuno's tactics, you know, I went to at the Chelsea game, you know, first half we he put out a good side, I thought we were gonna do well. Two shell changed it second half, brought Kante on. He didn't know what to do. Then we went to Palace and he played Winks, Holberg and Skip in the centre midfield. No creativity. And when you're relying on Dyer as your creative player, then we don't stand a chance. So I think you can't blame Kane solely because, you know, we, there is a service element to it. And we've just got no service. There's no one there. Alderville just to be able to ping a 60-yard ball. But no one can do that in Spurs at the minute. You know, not, you know they can't, it goes out into touch. So I think tactically, Nuno was just out of his depth. Do you know what? I think you may well be right. I just think it's a, an extremely bad fit. But didn't we all think that when he got the job anyway, Ian? Thanks for the call, mate. I mean, when Nuno got the job, I was thinking, hang on a minute, is he, has he really got the credentials to manage Tottenham Hotspur? And look at how Wolves played. Do they really want Ed, to be playing like that? Ed, knowing you talk about, surely, if you're running any sporting club, a coach or director, and you're looking, you've always got to be looking for the next two managers mm. who would fit that club. Right, Southampton, to be fair to them, have always done that, Aid, haven't they? We've praised them in yep. the past for it. Whether they get the decision right, it, do you know what I mean? They've, but they've had a plan in place. We've seen that. We taught them. They got rid of Mourinho. We have no idea who they wanted. They had, oh, you need to stop about Ed. We'll be able to go get Conte. We'll be able to go get Gattuso. We'll be able to get Fonseca. We'll be able to go who we want because it's Tottenham. We're living, we're a big club, big stadium. Nice little stadium now so we can get anybody. <laughs> you couldn't. You couldn't get anybody. So you gave it to Nuno in the end. I'll tell you what, let's go for eighth choice. There's no club, surely, or no business would run a business like that. If you're going to make a change, you're good. Right, we're making a change next week. Who we got in line? This is our plan. This is the type of manager we want. He fits our club perfect. We go again. None of that. You're spot on. And Levy, the way he was in, in the documentary, he was, he, he was like in awe of Mourinho. It was like it was almost like he was sort of bowing at his, his feet. And that didn't work out. In the end, he decided to get rid of him at a very, very strange time. I even think that it was in Levy's head, Ryan Mason might win this cup. We might have a good end to the season and I'll point him full time. Well, that didn't happen, so he had to go for somebody else. But I think that this might sound a little bit odd because you always talk about um, managers losing players, losing the dressing room. I think Levy's lost the dressing room. I think the players um, feel sympathy uh, with... Harry Kane over his predicament yes. and I think that Harry Kane obviously feels 100%. let down the, the players are on Harry Kane's side if anybody's thinking the, the Tottenham players don't like Harry Kane because he wanted to leave that's a nonsense well, I've told you this before yeah. I know exactly but all the players thought Harry Kane has to uh, leave for Tottenham to progress mm. and I know it's hard for all Tottenham fans to take that but it's right yeah. he wants to leave to win trophies it ain't happening at Tottenham he's giving it time he's giving it time it's not happened should have let him go and rebuilt. Yeah, and I think that when Tottenham fans are we listening to this saying, well, Man City should have paid the money, think about that from Harry Kane's point of view. Daniel Levy has put a few more million quid from Man City above an agreement with Harry Kane. Now, that to me isn't right. The players don't think it's right. So that's why Levy, I think, has to step back from the whole thing. Not necessarily resign because there's some good things he's well, done. Well, what's happened to West Ham since their owners have ste taken a step back? Yep. Amazing, isn't it? It's gone very let well. Let the manager run the side. Or a director of football, and it's amazing how far you can go. We'll come back to Spurs after five o'clock. It's Drive on Talksport with WeBuyAnyCar.com to find out how much your car's worth in under 60 seconds. Enter your reg number now.